Today I'm sharing 7 tips for creating a calm, peaceful and clutter-free home. I talk a lot about minimalism and decluttering on this channel, but the tips in today's video will be helpful for anyone who's watching. So whether you are also into minimalism or not, these are the things that can help you to really simplify your spaces and create a home environment that's peaceful, calming and relaxing to be in. Having a calming, peaceful home environment can help us to feel more balanced, centered and relaxed. And having a bunch of visual clutter or mess around can possibly distract us or even make us feel more stressed. And I've learned that there are some things that when done intentionally can really help to quiet the visual noise of a space and make it much more calming and relaxing to be in. And it's not always about minimalism or decluttering, it is about setting up systems and designs that make your home work better and that make your home support your well-being. And today's video is kindly sponsored by Skillshare, so a really big thanks to them for supporting the channel. Skillshare is the largest online learning community with a incredibly wide range of topics. You can learn from industry professionals that can teach you anything, no matter your current skill level. I especially love their learning paths, which are curated class collections that you can take in order to learn a skill from beginner to advanced. So right now I'm taking a learning path about Canva, I've used Canva for my thumbnails and my graphic designs for a couple years now, but my skills are still pretty basic. So I wanted to learn more about Canva and also about design in general. And so far I'm having a blast with the classes. I'm learning so many new things that I didn't know before. You can take classes on making your own clothing, improving your singing voice, gardening, interior design or learning an instrument, anything crafting basically, but also business skills and technical stuff like coding. So whatever you find interesting, you can learn about it on Skillshare. And the best thing is that Skillshare is so much more affordable than you know, taking expensive lessons or courses, but you're still learning from people who are pros at what they do. So Skillshare has been my go-to place for years now, whenever there is something that I want to learn for my business, for my personal life, and it has never let me down. So if you like learning, or maybe there's a hobby that you've been wanting to try for a while, I really recommend checking them out. And the first 500 people to click my link in the description box will get a one month free trial. So you can try as many classes and learning paths as you want for a whole month for free to see if you like it. So give it a try. Tip number one is to pick a proper spot for your things and make sure that that spot actually makes sense. Hanging up your coats on the coat rack, having a little bowl where you can put your keys. We have a tray where we always put our phones or a little box where we put all of our wires and chargers and things. And that keeps the visual clutter to a minimum, even if you have a lot going on. Making sure that all of your items have a home where they belong and that that place also actually makes sense is a great way to calm down your spaces because it reduces visual clutter and you can always find everything. So you can just take it, use it, and immediately put it back where it belongs. And this is just a habit that will make you a lot less messy. And I should know because I used to be quite messy myself and it was mostly because my things didn't have a home. So I just kept them on like piles wherever. And then that makes tidying very time consuming because you have to decide every time where you're going to tidy something. When deciding a proper spot for things, take into account where you most often use that item and keep it somewhere close to that so that it actually makes sense. And the easier and the simpler, the better, because that way you'll be able to stick with it long-term. Where do the coats go? Where do the keys go? Where do the shoes go? Where does the dirty laundry often end up? The best thing is to make that space their home by using a little bowl or a tray or a box or a hamper, whatever works. This will also make your home much more calming and relaxing to be in because you're never frantically looking for things when you're already running late, like sunglasses or hair scrunchy or your keys or whatever, you know where they are. And it can even help you to bring fewer new items into your home because you know what you have and you're not buying things that you already have in a box somewhere that you just forgot about. Tip number two is to be intentional with color. 
The colors around you can affect your mood, and we know from color theory that choosing the right colors for your home can have a positive impact on your mental health and well-being. While I personally do like light and bright spaces, as you can see, we don't have to avoid color altogether and go for that like typical white minimalist aesthetic or choose only neutrals and have everything be beige and cream and gray. I personally think that's kind of boring too. There is definitely room for including color and personality into your space without making it feel like visually overwhelming. Overall, warm bright colors like reds, oranges and yellows are more active. They stimulate energy while cooler colors like blues and greens are generally more soothing and calming. Now, if you're the type of person who likes a bit of color in your home, then you definitely can. And the trick is to choose more active colors or warmer colors for the places in your home where you're going to be more active. So maybe that's your home office or the place where you do your hobbies and your crafts, where you're being creative or places like the dining rooms or the kitchens. And then choosing the cooler, calming colors like blues and greens for the spaces in your home where you want to relax, like maybe your bedroom or the bathroom. And there is also a big difference when it comes to the effect that colors have on your mood when you look at not just the color itself, but the saturation. So going for a really beautiful color that's a bit more subdued instead of having a highly saturated version of that color will immediately tone down like the visual volume of a space and make it much more peaceful and relaxing to be in. So for my own apartment, I'm very happy with choosing the soft and soothing colors like the light blue in the living room, dusty green in the office and a richer dark blue in the bedroom. I love these effects the colors have on me and it feels overall quite calming. And because I also like brighter and more cheerful colors, I included little pops of color here and there in the form of accessories rather than painting an entire wall this color. This gives it a cheerfulness without making it feel visually overwhelming. So if you have a space in your home that always feels quite messy or like visually stimulating, take a look at the colors that are in that room and not just the walls, but also the furniture, the decor. See if you can create a more coordinated color palette. And if you really want the room to be a lot like calmer and more peaceful and serene, going for a more calming, desaturated color palette is the way to go. Number three is to just place things on a tray. This is such a neat little trick and it's mind blowing how much of a difference this makes. Take a look at this. It looks quite messy and cluttered, right? So here are six items out on the surface next to my espresso machine. Now look at this, exactly the same, just on a cute little bamboo tray. And the trick is that now this registers as one item. It looks so much more cohesive and intentional and it gives a sense of uniformity because instead of seeing six separate items, we now see one specific item, which is coffee accessories next to the espresso machine, which is much less mentally straining. So first decide if the items out on your services are things that you actually want to have out. If you're using them daily, then that makes sense. Otherwise, I would suggest storing them somewhere out of sight so that you know the less things you have out on your services, the less visually straining it will be. And then once you decide everything that you wanna have out on your services, group the little items together and put them on a tray or like a little box or an organizer of some sort and just sit back and watch the magic happen. We do this with some of our condiments, the espresso stuff. We have our tea accessories on a little tray. We have the phone tray to keep the phones so easy, so helpful. Tip number four is to utilize closed storage spaces and to be very intentional with open shelving. Going for closed storage spaces as opposed to open shelving will immediately make your life so much easier and instantly reduce the visual noise of your space and maybe even make it look a little bit more tidy and calming and <laughs> serene than it is. I usually choose closed storage spaces, especially for things where I'm keeping items that aren't necessarily very pretty, like in here or in here or in here. Open shelving looks great in pictures and on social media when it's all like stylized and beautiful, but it is not very practical 
unless you really love dusting and you want to do as much dusting as you possibly can, <laughs> then by all means go for open shelving. But closed storage will make your life so much easier because at least when the doors or the drawers are closed, all of those things are just out of sight. Even if you do a really good job at keeping things tidy and organized, it is still like a lot to take in. So that's where closed storage can be very helpful. We have one open shelving unit that I got very intentionally for our home office because I had some items that I thought would just be nice to display there. And I think this looks great like this, but I styled it very intentionally. And you can see that while it does look very nice, it is not very efficient in storing a lot of things because there's also a lot of empty space. So use that for the things that you really love looking at and otherwise try to go for closed storage spaces. Tip number five is to create a cozy, calm, and serene clutter-free zone. So this can be a room if you have a spare room. It can also be a little corner in your living room or a little nook near the window, or it can even be your bedroom, but choose like one or maybe two spaces in your home that are specifically for peace and quiet. The wonderful thing about this is that it makes sure that you have at least one space in your home that is calming, serene, clutter-free oasis that is restful. And especially if you are a very sensitive person like me, then this will be a game changer. It makes sense that certain areas of the home are just a lot harder to keep tidy because there's more stuff and there's more traffic like the living room or maybe the kid's bedroom. And trying very hard to keep those spaces always like tidy and cozy and calming can be a lot of work and sometimes <laughs> kind of impossible even, especially if you're very busy. So what you can do instead is just take one space and have that be your cozy, calming corner. You could set some rules for that space as well. So for example, no clutter or no toys. You could say no working or no electronics. And you could also just decorate it really nice and cozy with some pillows and blankets and maybe a little plant or a little candle and make it very nice. For me, one of those spaces is my bedroom. And I know that our bedroom looks a little boring <laughs> because there's no wall art, no accessories, really not that much going on. But I like it like that because it helps me to calm down and fall asleep much easier. I also have my little reading chair in our office. I'll take a pillow and a blanket, maybe light a candle, drink a cup of tea, read a book. It is so nice. Tip number six is to calm down your wall decor. When it comes to wall decor, pictures, art, but also clocks, ornaments, lighting, there's a way to do it intentionally where it really blends into the space and looks calming and cohesive. And there's a way where it only adds to the visual clutter and increases the visual loudness of a space. I wish I could show you some examples of my place, but unfortunately we haven't really been able to figure out the walls in this place yet. <laughs> Every time we try to hang something, it just goes horribly wrong. <laughs> I swear like the walls feel like styrofoam, nothing stays put. So we haven't really been able to figure it out. We tried hanging a little shelf here, for example, and it was a disaster and now I have to paint again. So. Don't get me started. Like I'm not going to stop talking about this. So a few tips on how to make use of your walls to make your space feel like calming and cohesive and peaceful and less overwhelming. First of all, try to go bigger. So instead of having a bunch of little pieces of art or photos spread out over your walls, try to go for like one or two bigger pieces. It can make such a big difference if you make sure that the size of your art pieces actually fits your walls. So don't be afraid to go bigger. I think it is much easier to go too small than it is to go too big. Next, if you want a calming, peaceful vibe, try to see if you can incorporate nature. So that can be like photos of nature. It can also be natural materials or more natural colors in your art. But nature is very soothing and can be so nice to have a few reminders of nature on your own walls in your own home. And once we figure out how to safely hang stuff here without ruining the walls, <laughs> that's what I plan to do as well. Research shows that just by looking at photos of nature, we can already reduce our stress levels. So if you want your walls to be like more calming and serene, I would try going for less, uh, less different art pieces, but bigger choosing colors that really are cohesive and make sense in the space. And if you can incorporate nature, that's even better. 
Number seven is simply to get rid of things that make you feel stressed. Now I know I said I wasn't going to talk about decluttering in this video, but I could not make this video and not mention this one because maybe it's even like the most important one. No matter how good you are at tidying and cleaning and organizing and designing your space, it is very hard to feel relaxed and happy in your own home if it is filled with things that make you feel guilty or sad or just bad. A few examples, clothing in your closet that you don't fit into anymore, either take it out of your closet and store it in a box somewhere if you feel like there's a reasonable chance that you will be able to use those items within like a year or two. You know, it would be a waste to get rid of them, but take them out of your closet and put them in a box somewhere else or just declutter them and give them a second life with someone else. My life instantly improved when I did this because when I opened up my wardrobe before, half of the items in there had gotten too small for me and every time I saw them, I got reminded of the fact that my body had changed and I wasn't going to be able to use those things anymore. It made me feel bad, it made me feel guilty, it made me feel insecure. And once I took the very difficult step to declutter the things that I did fit anymore it all went away I feel fine about my body now I feel like you know it my body is fine the way it is I just had clothing that wasn't be able to fit into anymore so it is so nice to now open up my wardrobe and see only items that I actually can wear and that I can fit and there's no more guilt or remorse or insecurity things you got from other people maybe it was a gift or maybe it was an inheritance or maybe it just reminds you of someone or a period in your life so when you look at the item when you hold it in your hands how do you feel do you feel calm do you feel guilt? Do you feel sad? Do you feel stressed? Our home is our sanctuary. It is our zero, 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 zero place, like the place where we can recharge. And I think that you deserve a home that is filled with only the things that make you feel good and that add to your happiness and well-being instead of detract from it. So get in the habit of identifying the things that make you feel bad and try to get them out of your house when you can. I know it's hard to do because it is emotional and we feel attached to things. And even if it is something that makes us feel bad, it can still be very hard to let it go and not feel guilty about that. So I get it. The question that you can ask yourself that is super helpful that I always use is, what if one day you woke up and you went into that room and the item was just magically not there anymore. So it's not something that you did, it's just gone. How do you feel? Would you feel relieved if the item was gone? And that is a good sign that you can then declutter it because in this scenario, it's not something that you did. So you're taking away that guilty feeling that you get from decluttering it. And you're simply looking at the item and the effect that it has on your life. And if you feel relieved, like, is gone and you didn't have to declutter it yourself, then that is a very good sign that you probably should or could <laughs> declutter it. And there's no reason to feel bad. So now I would love to know from you, what is something that has really helped you to make your home feel more calming and peaceful or keep it clutter free easily? I would love to know in the comments. I love talking about like home design and organization and colors and spaces. So I would love to read about it. Don't forget to check out Skillshare and get your 30 day free trial. So you can try out as many classes as you want for free. Link in the description box below. And as always, questions, comments, conversations down below. Have a wonderful day. Thank you so much for being here and I will see you all again next week. Bye bye. You know, sometimes I just can't figure out if I'm having a good hair day or a bad hair day and it both seems true. <laughs> Do you ever have that?